So how do you actually get better at motocross? In today's video, I'm gonna give you my top four tips that'll help you get better faster. I just wanna be jacked and ride dirt bikes. Step number one is showing up to the track with a plan. Here's how we structure our training at MTF. We have moto days, speed days, section days, and then we sprinkle in some skill work on those section days. The moto days are exactly how they sound. We're working on our endurance and we're tracking our lap times to make sure that we're not fading. This gives us the chance to work on finding a flow, being consistent, hitting our marks, breathing. Some days we even do no brake motos to bring the intensity down a little bit more and focusing on carrying momentum and not breaking through the turns. If you're not necessarily hitting your fastest lap time ever, that's okay. The important thing is that whatever lap time that we are hitting, we want to hit as close to that lap time every single lap for the entire moto. Speed days are where we focus on just that, speed. For days like this, we'll do shorter motos, maybe between two lappers and five lappers, or maybe we'll even do one lap at a time, doing one lap sprints from the gate. When we do this, we're simply trying to hit our fastest lap time possible. The only focus is speed. We're not doing longer stuff because that's when fatigue starts to play a role. You want to learn how to go fast when you're feeling fresh and strong and confident. Now, section days are where we break down different parts of the track and work on technique. We'll add different constraints like going through a deep rut with no clutch or no front brake or trying to keep your feet on the pegs. Days like this, fitness or endurance shouldn't be a factor at all. It's all about getting high quality reps, working on bad habits, and trying to perfect your technique. Your technique is ultimately what allows you to go faster. And it's a whole different ball game when we go to the race. It's like we just turn our brains off and we just wanna go fast. So the better your technique foundation is, the more likely it'll come to you second nature when you're doing things like motos or even racing. Now, incorporating some skill work on the section days is important because it brings in these seemingly unrelated skills that makes you a better rider overall. Doing things like tire hopping, slow wheelies, jump transfers, nose wheelies. Now, you might be wondering, how do I fit all this in? I don't even ride four days per week. What's important is that you incorporate each of these elements into whatever time you have. Like for instance, if I only rode one day per week, I would start my session off by doing a longer moto so I can get my fitness and my endurance. I would immediately follow the moto by doing some sprints to work on my speed. And then I would pick a couple sections so I can really dial in my technique and sprinkle in a little skill stuff, challenge myself to do a couple wheelies, a couple stoppies, whatever you have time for. Now, totally shameless plug, we have MTF Pro, and if you sign up, you get access to our training programs that are all available on our app, or you can print them out, and they tell you exactly what to do for up to four days of riding per week. You just show up, open your app, and you're just told what to do as if you're training here in person. The link is down below in the description if you want to check it out. Tip number two, make sure you have a consistent supply of parts. Things break. You can literally tip over in a corner, bend your exhaust pipe, and then not be able to ride for weeks because you're waiting on a new exhaust to get here. We try to stock up on things like levers, handlebars, pipes if you can, tires, tubes. That's why for the most part, everyone at MTF is required to have two bikes. And one is basically there just as a parts bike. So as things break, you have a bike that you can pull spare parts off of so that you can continue to ride. All it takes is for one thing to break and you could be sitting out for weeks. Tip number three, get in better physical shape. I work out consistently and I have for years. And even when I go ride once a week or once every other week, I get super sore. So I can only imagine how sore and beat up I'd feel if I wasn't in this good of shape. This will also help keep you on the track through injury prevention. The number one killer of progress and motocross careers is injuries. By being in the best physical shape that you can possibly be in, you can reduce your chances of getting hurt. Now you can't ever bring them to zero, but you can reduce your chances. And anything that we can do to give us a better shot at being healthy for longer, we should be doing. And tip number four, look on a longer time horizon. We should be more concerned with long-term goals rather than short-term goals. A key question you should ask yourself is what can I do to be a better rider next year and then be an even better rider the year after that? Everyone wants to go from a C rider to an A rider in one year, and it just doesn't happen like that. In fact, if you ever work with somebody who promises that they can take you from being a C rider to an A rider, you should cut and run because they're lying to you about that and who knows what else they're lying to you about. Everyone thinks that progress looks like this, a nice linear line where you start riding and you just get better and better and better and better. It actually looks more like this. You're gonna have weeks where you feel like your technique is great. You're gonna have weeks where you feel like your technique is taking a step back. 
and your focus is gonna have to change throughout the course of your training career. Your greatest and most noticeable fastest improvements will happen as you transition from being a total beginner to more of an intermediate rider. And most people never leave intermediate. It takes real dedication and consistency to make the jump to professional. Now, I truly believe that anybody who wants to be a professional motocross racer can do so if they're willing to put in the work. I've seen kids come through MTF that are literally the slowest at the facility out of all the members. And they stay, they put in their years of hard work, and they make sure that they're getting better year after year. Now they're racing pro motocross and pro supercross. It can happen to you too, if you really want it to, if you're willing to work for it. Now, if you're ready to get started, please consider checking out MTF Pro or MTF Lite. We didn't just create the service to make money. We really believe that we're introducing a service to our sport that's going to help a lot of people actually know what they're doing when it comes to their training for motocross. Now, if you're not ready to commit to training online with us, at least consider hitting the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with the latest training information. And if you wanna get started right now, click on this video right here where I take you through a full body strength workout. I'll see you there.